All right, in this video, I wanna cover the concepts from module 19.3, which involves looking at quadratic functions in standard form and in vertex form. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example where we need to take this quadratic function and write it in standard form, then find the axis of symmetry and the vertex. Remember that standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is the coefficient of x squared, b is the coefficient of x to the first power, and c is the constant. So when we look at this, in order to have the quadratic function in standard form, that means y needs to be the only thing on the left side of the equation, and everything else needs to be on the right side. So what's the first thing that needs to go to the right side? Is our ax squared, and that's right here, this positive x squared. So I'm just gonna drag it over to that side, and when I do that, it has to change signs. So now we have this, y minus 4x equals negative x squared plus zero. Next, we have to move the negative 4x over. So we're gonna drag it over, and when we do, it's gonna become a positive 4x. So now our equation reads, y equals negative x squared plus 4x plus zero. So now our equation is in standard form, where our a value is negative one, our b value is four, and our c value is zero. Now you could choose to write the plus zero or not here, it doesn't really matter. Next, let's go ahead and find the axis of symmetry, which is the x value for our vertex. And the way we're gonna do that is by using the formula x equals negative b over two a. So we're gonna rewrite this with parentheses, so x equals negative, a parentheses for b, over two, and a parentheses for a. And then we're gonna plug these values in. Our b value is four, and our a value is negative one. So now what we have here is x equals negative four over two times negative one is negative two. And negative four divided by negative two is positive two. So that is our axis of symmetry, and it's also the x value of our vertex, is x equals two. Now that we have the x value for our vertex, all we need to do is plug that into this equation and solve it for the y value of our vertex. So we're gonna say here, y equals negative, a parentheses for x squared, plus four, and a parentheses for x, and I'm just gonna leave the plus zero off because it doesn't change anything. And we see that x is two, so we're gonna put a two in here. And now we're gonna work this out. So y equals two squared is four, and we cannot forget about this negative, we need to bring it down here. And over here, positive four times two is positive eight. And negative four plus eight is four. So y equals four. So now we have all the pieces of information that we need. Our equation is in standard form. Our axis of symmetry, or x, is two. And our vertex is at the point two comma four. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about converting a quadratic function from vertex form to standard form. So here we have our function in vertex form, y equals two times x plus five squared plus three. And basically what we need to do is work out the right side of this and we will end up with our function in standard form. First, we need to take care of this x plus five squared, which means x plus five times x plus five. Now you could FOIL that out, but this is a special product. This is an a plus b squared. And so we know that there's a pattern to the answer where we can get the answer without having to do FOIL. And that pattern is when you have a plus b squared, first term squared in the front, second term squared in the back, and in the middle, we're gonna multiply the two terms together and then double it so that we write that like this, two AB. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we're gonna have here Y equals two, and then this parentheses plus three, and in the middle, let's go ahead and use our special product. First term squared in the front, X squared, second term squared in the back, that's 25, and in the middle, five times x is five x, and double it, that is 10 x. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and distribute this two. So two times x squared is two x squared, 
2 times 10x is 20x, and 2 times 25 is 50, and bring down this plus 3. Next thing is combine like terms. 50 plus 3 is 53. So y equals 2x squared plus 20x plus 53. And there you go. We've converted a quadratic function from vertex form to standard form. Let's take a look at another example here. We have y equals negative 3 times x minus 7 squared plus 2. First, we need to take care of this x minus 7 squared. Again, this is a special product. This is a minus b squared. Now, the pattern here is the same exact thing as the other one, except the middle term is negative. So first term squared in the front, second term squared in the back, and then in the middle, you're going to multiply these two terms together and double it. And it's always going to be negative, so negative 2ab. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have y equals negative 3 in the parentheses on this plus 2. And so our special product, first term squared in the front, x squared. Second term squared in the back, that's 49. And in the middle, negative 7 times x is negative 7x, and double that, and we get negative 14x. Now let's go ahead and distribute this negative 3. So negative 3 times x squared, that is negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times negative 14x, that is going to be positive 42x. And negative 3 times positive 49, that is negative 147, and we bring down this plus 2. Last thing we have to do here is combine like terms. Negative 147 plus 2 is negative 145. And there you go. Our quadratic function is now in standard form. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about writing a quadratic function given a table of values. And where we're going to start is by writing our function in vertex form, which is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Now remember that h comma k is our vertex. Now in order to write our function in vertex form, we need the vertex. So the question is, how do we identify the vertex from a table of values? Remember that the graph of a quadratic function is this u-shaped curve called a parabola. Now the reason why this graph is u-shaped is because the y values on either side mirror each other. And that point where the parabola turns and starts going back up in the opposite direction, that is called the vertex. So if we take a look at our y values here, we have a 13 here and a 13 here. They're mirroring each other. And we also have a 1 here and a 1 here. But we only have one negative 3. And why is that? That's because this point right here, negative 2 comma negative 3, that's that vertex. This is where the parabola turns and starts moving back up. So now we have our vertex, the point negative 2 comma negative 3. And remember that our vertex is h comma k. So what we're going to do with that is plug in these values into this equation here. Now we need to make sure we use parentheses because we can get tripped up with some double negatives here. So we have y equals a times x minus, now I'm going to put a parentheses for h, squared, plus a parentheses for k. Now let's go ahead and plug in h and k. So h is here, negative 2, and k is here, negative 3. And this is why it's important to make sure you use parentheses. Because if you don't, you might lose the fact that this is a double negative. So this equation is now y equals a times x plus 2 squared minus 3. So now we need to find a. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to pick another point from this table. Let's go ahead and take negative 1 comma 1 and substitute that for y. So y is 1 and x is negative 1. And so now let's work this out. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1, and 1 squared is 1, and 1 times a is a. So this becomes 1 equals a minus 3. Now all we need to do is add 3 to both sides, and we see that a equals 4. Now we could put this 4 in for a and finish writing our function in vertex form. y equals 4 times x plus 2 squared minus 3. Now we can continue on converting this function that's now in vertex form into standard form. So y equals 4 times 
And then remember, this is an a plus b squared, so our x plus 2 squared is x squared in the front, 2 squared in the back, which is 4, and in the middle, 2 times x is 2x, and double that, and that is 4x. Next, we're going to distribute this 4. So 4 times x squared is 4x squared. 4 times 4x is 16x. And 4 times 4 is 16. Bring down this minus 3. And 16 minus 3 is 13. So our equation is y equals 4x squared plus 16x plus 13. And so there's our function in standard form. So we took the points in this table and we wrote an equation in vertex form and then we wrote the equation in standard form. All right, so now for our final example, we're going to go ahead and follow the same process, but this time modeling a real-life situation and getting our information from a graph. It says, a rock is knocked off a cliff into the water far below. The falling rock's height above the water in feet is given by a function of the form f of t equals a times t minus h squared plus k, where t is the time in seconds after the rock begins to fall. So this function here, f of t equals a times t minus h squared plus k, is in vertex form. It's just using t and f of t instead of x and y. So we can easily find our vertex on the graph and then plug it in. Our vertex is here, 0, 40. So now we can plug these in. Remember to always use parentheses before you substitute. So h is 0 and k is 40. So t minus 0 is obviously t, and t squared is just t squared. So we can write the function to look like this now. f of t equals a times t squared plus 40. Now we're going to take this other point here, and we're going to plug it in for x and y, or t and f of t. So our f of t value is 24, and our t value is 1. So again, 1 squared is 1, and 1 times a is a, so this becomes 24 equals a plus 40. And so now all we got to do is subtract 40 from both sides, and we get the equation a equals negative 16. So we plug in negative 16 for a, and we get the function f of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 40. And since h was 0, this is our equation in standard form. All right, so that's it. Those are all the concepts covered in module 19.3.